Oh boy, I sure do love this game. I wish you could make this in Blender. What? What's happening? No! Hello and welcome back to another video. In today's video, we're going to be making my new favorite game of all time and teach it to you how you can do this. So first, we'll start off by opening Blender 3.6 or any other version of Blender you might be using. And what we're going to do is create a cell shader in Eevee. So we want our render engine to be Eevee and we can turn all of these on. Uh, ambient occlusion and bloom is always nice to have in Eevee. If we look at our character model that we uh, want to copy, it's pretty much just a cube that's uh, subdivided and then a little bit extruded. This is pretty much it. The first thing we're going to be doing is creating the material and then after that we can make the animation of the character moving like in the game. So let's start with the material. Let's just call this cell shader. And if you want, I'll leave this on my gumroad. We just want to remove the principal BSDF and add a diffuse. Place that there. You can go into rendered mode of course. Just make the background black. So we can preview this and we see nothing because we don't have a light. So just add a sun lamp. So we can preview this and we see uh, just basic material. Now what we can do is shader to RGB. And this node only works in Eevee. This doesn't work in cycles, so keep that in mind. If you want to use this in cycles, you have to bake the image. Next thing we're going to be doing is adding a color ramp, placing it behind the shader RGB and changing this to constant. So now the material will be black. And if we change the slider, we can slowly see the effect to appear. And this is based on the lighting. So if we move the sun, the cell shader moves as well. So in the game, the sun is coming from right about here. So I'm just going to place that right there. And for the colors, uh, we're just going to change the color anyway, so that doesn't really matter. So if we look at the screenshot, there's also a gradient. So we want to add a gradient texture. Looks great, but if you want to rotate this, you can just press Ctrl T with uh, the gradient selected. And this will add the mapping and texture coordinates. Make sure you have a node wrangler enabled by the way and then you could you could if you want and if you needed it just rotate it on the uh, y-axis uh, 90 degrees and it will be from the bottom uh, most of the time you will use the y rotation to get it from the bottom keep in mind which texture coordinates you're going to be using if you're going to be using the normal this will not really work because it will only make uh, the normals white that are positive so phasing in the positive direction so for now we're just going to be using a generated and this works fine now we want another color ramp and just set this to linear again and we want a cool gradient color so we're just going to be picking a little bluish and then here a little pink something like this and also make it a little bit less saturated. Something like this works great. And now what we can do is we can add a mix node. Set this to color. And just grab these color ramps and mix them together. So like this. Adding a little bit of gradient. Maybe making this uh, wider. If you increase this value, it kind of says to the uh, mix node that uh, more of the black should be mixed in. And if you make it lighter, less black should be mixed in. So you create this uh, really cool shadow effect with uh, the color still intact from uh, the other color ramp. So it's a really neat trick to keep in mind next time you're going to be making EV materials. The next thing we can do is just go over to the subdivision and apply it so we can add some eyes. And then a very neat trick I learned is if we just set the origin to the 3D cursor, we can go into edit mode and go over to the 3D cursor, then hit Ctrl M and hit the Y axis and it will be mirrored. Uh, we have to duplicate it first. So I did it again right there. And now we have two eyes and we can just join these together. And there we have our character from the game. So the next thing we need to do is just animate it. And the animation is really unique actually. Um, but I have something up my sleeve for that. What we're going to do is just place the origin point all the way at the back and then add a wave modifier right here. This will make it uh, yeah, wave up and down like a worm. So what we're going to be doing is just rotating it 90 degrees in a way that makes it 
rotate along the axis we want. So like this, we can change the height to make it uh, a larger wave. And the width uh, adjusts the interval between waves. The narrowness kind of adjusts the slope of the wave. If you have the narrowness at 10 meters like one, it's really wavy. So I think this uh, does the trick. This works well. Now for the environment, we can do the exact same thing. If you want to get rid of these uh, fizzy shadows, the fuzzy shadows, you can just go over to the sun lamp and go over to the data and just change the angle to zero. And you, that will give you these crisp, crisp edges. Something else you can do is go over to the shadows and change the bit depth to the maximum amount. And that creates really sharp edges. So I hope this helped. Uh, if you if it did, please leave a like and subscribe. Go over to my Gumroad, support me on there, and I'll see you in the next one.